It's... I feel like I'm watching Robot Wars. Is, is this the early 2000s? Am I watching Robot Wars here? Okay, so let's zoom on over. Is that Keemstar? I thought I saw Keemstar then. Is Keemstar playing on the... Uh... Oh no, it was Kiko Master. Oh, what a Keemstar for me. So, uh, Cole FR, looks like they're going to have one clan hang back on Cap 2, while the rest are uh, coming down to defend Cap 1. We'll zoom on over to the French attackers real quickly. I see a dead name over there. I'm trying to... Periscope, please give the spectate cam custom movement speed, please. So the match has begun. One MSP going out from Stacko. They are a little bit slow getting going here. The attacking French team, Parabellum, are a little bit slow this round. They have one Matilda going out. They're trying to get their vehicles out as well. There's two Logitrucks. trucks. So they've got one Matilda going out. The command car will be going out soon as well. And they've got a... I, I can't remember the name of this tank. It's, a, it's another Renault. A Renault something. Major Heifer is dead somehow. So, a three-man crew there from the Matilda. They've also got the AT truck going out as well. So, they're a little bit slower getting going this time, Parabellum. A little bit slower to get going. They have dropped an MSP forward, so... It looks like this is what I said. I, I expect... A Parabellum to maybe rush the first objective a little bit quicker because they know they know they need to at least take four capture zones and win the match to at least beat Cole FR. We'll go and jump Falcon. I'll hide nameplates as he pushes forward. There is troops right in front of him. Ooh, jam Falcon and then Hash Brown getting sprayed down there by Etonio. With that um, little SMG. So the French push has been spotted immediately. Very aggressive start by the uh, Cole FR guys. Look how far the Cole FR guys have come out. They've gone very deep. No one's even in the, uh, the two buildings. The Cole FR guys are very, very aggressive. And they know. They know they have to be aggressive. The Cole FR guys know if they're aggressive... And they bleed Parabellum on tickets. It works in their advantage. They won the first game. They took three caps. So if they're aggressive on defense here, if they're offensive on defense, that's going to be very hard for the uh, Parabellum guys. So we have got the Matilda flanking round to the west. It looks like Parabellum, they're just doing a big solid infantry push from the south, supported by... I actually don't know what they're supported by. I think it's just a solid infantry push. They do have that blue tank. I forgot th what this one's called. This tank isn't as good as the Renault 38. This tank is very slow. It's It's got the same armor. It's got the same... Well, it's got a little bit of a better gun. But the thing with this tank is it's very slow compared to the Renault 38. Is this the Samon? The Samon or something like that? All I know is the Renault 38 that we saw uh, the fire, uh, the Cole FR guy is using is a lot better light tank. Purely down to its speed and mobility. Flavian going down there. Tin and Enigma moving forward. So they are pushing forwards very, very slowly. They are pushing through these trees. Tickets are pretty even at the moment. They are pushing the Germans back. Along the scheme moving forward. Strange Droid, Savagu, and Nickelman here coming forward. The blue French tank here. I might be confused. I might be confusing this with the other French light tank. But I, I'm pretty sure I personally prefer the, the 38 purely down to its agility and movement speed. It's very quick to uh, turn. You can see the tank being chased now. Here's 
Ooh, good work there. Getting support by infantry. An AT guy was trying to sneak up on this tank. This tank has pushed all the way forward. Trying to crash through. Mam out here. Killing. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm, okay. Not quite sure what happened there. But, um... The tank is gone. And so was Mamad. Um, not quite sure what happened there, but... Mamad did take out that tank. Tin took Flavian down. We've got, uh, Desax here. Tin shooting, missing. Tin missing the second shot. Come on, Tin. And Tin going down to General there. Tin... You need to go back to the target range, my guy. Few bad misses there. We've got the Parabellum guys trying to push forward on the uh, the east side now. Smoke's going down there. Muddler CX. Trying to creep forward. But I've got to say, this is a very aggressive start by the... Um, the defenders here. The German defenders are being very aggressive and... To, to their credit, they have to be. Something is going on over here. There's some kind of exchange going down over there. So I think that's a fob. A fob has been built over there. Heifer. Heifer looks like an infantry guy. Oh, so the Germans have a 2-2-2. A 2-2-2 is going to be very good in this uh, matchup. It's not going to be great against the French tanks. But it's quick. It's quick and it's going to be excellent against infantry. So that was a Stuka coming in. So it looks like the French 2-2 located this MSP. Or was this a Logi truck? Uh, it's a Logi truck, I believe. So it looks like the French, uh, the German 2-2-2 located that French MSP. Took it out. They also caught a Stuka on it to make sure. Here's the French uh, commander, Heffer. Oh, that might have been the MSP. Because there's another Logi truck here. And we've got a French... What is this? This is a French AT truck. Uh, interesting. Oh, and I was literally about to say, the 222 can't destroy a tank, but a French AT truck. It's going to be easy pickings. And there goes the AT truck. Looks like the Logi truck actually took some damage as well. So the 222 might be able to get a kill on the Logi truck here as well. Lodge truck running away, knowing the 2-2 two -two is there patrolling. 2-2-2, two -two -two probably at that range. Yeah, he won't be able to hear the Lodge truck. Lodge truck is kind of quiet. But yeah, i not sure that was a smart idea by the AT truck to go on this mad flank. It would have been best if that AT truck supported the infantry on the first capture zone instead of going for a flank, I feel. Um, going back to the action now. Here's the map. You can see uh, Cole FR have formed a defensive perimeter around the first capture zone. They're being very aggressive. They're not actually holding the buildings. They are pushing out, meeting Parabellum as they attack. Jam Falcon pushing forward here with that little uh, 9mm SMG gun. And he goes down, taken down by an SMG. I think that was Flavian taking him. Flavian and Jam Falcon having a few exchanges this game. There's Ben. Ben requested that I uh, get a view on him. Ben is a sniper this game. And Ben goes down. There you go, Ben. There's your shout out. And I've got to say, I'm kind of disappointed. There, there was your moment to shine. You asked for a shout out. And, uh... Oh, you wasted it, my guy. So here is the Renault 38. I find this tank a lot better than the blue. I, I think I want to call the blue, blue tank Summer or something like that. I find this tank purely down to its speed and its agility to spin on the spot is a lot better than the uh, the blue one that we just saw. But I've got to say, where is the Parabellum infantry? The Parabellum were doing a big push. They were doing a big frontal push. But for the most part, they've been wiped out now. And uh, it is now the defenders who are actually going on the offensive. Fisher here is going to find a rally soon. <laughs> yeah, he found the rally. He was able to hear it. And there goes the rally. Jam Falcon rushing forward. Jam Falcon almost getting the kill on Fisherman, but the second grenade actually took out Falcon. Very unlucky for Falcon. Sweet Kisses is in the bush nearby, but it looks like the 
the northern push has been completely wiped out by Cole FR. They're being very aggressive. Sweet Kiss is getting a kill over there. I can see M Mamard. Mamard, Mamard. Cole FR guy. And also another FFI guy. So if you look, is that a German MSP? I believe that is a German MSP. So the German M the Germans have managed to put an MSP very deep into the French lands. So the Matilda went down. The Matildas are actually being destroyed. I don't know how that happened. And the Germans actually have an MSP over here. So that's incredible. Cold F4. Again, these French. Thinking outside the bon uh, outside the box, these French teams, they've actually put an MSP deep behind the attacker's line so they can continuously harass the uh, attacking forces of Parabellum. And you can see, it's working. The Matilda that didn't go down last game has been taken out this game. And the attackers are behind on tickets. Parabellum really struggling here on the attack. The French team... Cold FR showing how aggressive and how creative they can be. But Parabellum is doing a bit of an infantry push on the east side. Mudler over here has been uh, spotted. He is taking fire. Mudler throwing a grenade out. His grenade falling short. And then Mudler getting shot from the side from M Mushu. So I've got to say, uh, the Parabellum guys are very divided. Uh, very divided at the moment. They're not really. They don't seem as organised. It looks like their plan has kind of been um, hampered by Cole FR. The F FFI guys holding their flank. So it looks like. I'm just gonna. Uh, speculate here, but it looks like Parabellum tried to mimic the cold FR style of attack at the beginning. They tried to send a couple of, uh, they tried to send a squad around to the flank to try cut off the reinforcements, but Cold FR, knowing that was maybe going to be a popular tactic used, positioned a squad there to counter that. So, Cold FR doing a great job so far. Over 10 minutes gone in this game. Ticket lead in Cold FR's favor. And also, I've got to say, current map control lead and given to Cole FR as well. So a smoke barrage came down there, but I don't know who that smoke barrage benefits because uh, Parabellum has no one there uh, nearby to utilize that smoke barrage. Their infantry is still very far away. So you got Will X. And I've got to say, yeah, the, the Parabellum guys are very, very divided at the moment. I mean, if we just look at the map, look look how spread. Look how spread the Cole FR guys are. They have spread a huge perimeter around the first capture zone to the point where they only have one guy, Falavian, actually in the capture zone and then one guy nearby, General. They spread out in a circle around the first capture zone and they're also being aggressive. They're pushing against Parabellum. They're not holding back, waiting for the attackers. They're probing out themselves in the attack. Uh, there are a couple of guns over here. I want to quickly zoom in on these guns because I can see them on the map. So we've got... One AT gun here. Very well placed. Look at this positioning by this AT gun. Great positioning by this AT gun. It's very well camouflaged. And it's got a good visibility through these trees. If I just hide nameplates. Look at look at the visibility this AT gun has on this angle. So very good placement by him. And then we've got the second AT gun here. Which is a little bit bigger. Watching straight down the main road. You can tell. The Cole FR guys have put in a lot of practice. They know perfectly where to place their AT guns. And it looks like the Parabellum guys are really struggling on the attack. We've got Jam Falcon leading a squad with Hash Brown, Bronisan, 
And uh, Sweet Kiss is trying to push forward through this tree line. Jam Falcon going down there. Artillery going out now. Artillery and grenades. Hash Brown going down. So that was German artillery. They spotted Jam Falcon, uh, Jam Falcon's uh, squad pushing forward, and they decided, screw it, throw in a small round of artillery to clear them out. I I, I don't know how Sweet Kisses managed to survive then, but Sweet Kisses is did bleed out. Jam Falcon under MG fire now. A grenade going out from Jam Falcon. Jam Falcon going down eventually. To see him. We've got General Araka pushing forward now. I believe he is a squad leader as well. He goes down to MG uh, to the MG fire of I think is that Sark? Yep, Sark. Great MG placement here on this ridge line. So if we just look at this, uh, look at the angle this MG has. He's able to fire straight down the forest line, but he's also able to cover into the trees as well. If any infantry tries to push across into the cap zone. So great positioning by this uh, MG here. And I've got to say, map control one, once again, I think I mentioned this earlier, map control is in Call of Duty's hands. I... The power bone guys are spread very thin. There's the strafe run there. Spitfire coming in, trying to clear out the MG. But Call FR, they have eyes everywhere. They know where the power bone guys are coming from. Every time uh, the power bone guys push forward to try attack. Call FR is there, ready to meet them, and then push them back. Jam Falcon spotted Mad Fox here. Jam Falcon trying to mush, uh, push forward. Jam Falcon clearing out Mad Fox there. Good work by Jam Falcon. Keeping their rally alive. Honorable Fisherman went down there to Hatchbound. I heard an exchange of pistols, but there, there comes the MG. Look at the MG firing down already. MG just firing into the bush line. The MG from Zark. I've got to say, I don't know if it's because they've played both matches on the night and maybe concentration, maybe player focus is a little bit wearing. Maybe they're struggling to concentrate and organize, which I've got to be honestly, if I played two clan matches in one night, I would definitely be struggling with concentration and focus. Powerbound guys are, seem to be struggling. We've got the Renault 38 over here. And behind it is... Is that another Renault 38? Yep, two, two 38s working together. I think that was the 2-2 out here. Did they manage to destroy the 2-2? I believe this was the 2-2. Oh. It is a tank crewman. So I think they did destroy the 2-2-2. And the tank shell just disappeared for some reason. So we'll zoom back over here. What's the time? So... Uh, Parabellum, they only have 25 minutes left to take this first capture zone, and they are behind on tickets. Not by a lot, but they are behind on tickets. We've got the Storm guys flanking behind, looking to cut off the reinforcements. This is exactly what Cole FR did. They sent a squad behind to the second camp to cut off the reinforcements. Will Nickelman see... I think Nickelman's going to run straight in front of Exos right here. Or, no. You're kidding me. You're actually kidding me. Can we please get Nickelman... So, I, I think that confirms... I think that confirms what I said about player fatigue a little bit. Nickelman... Maybe not hearing the footsteps. Maybe he needs a different headset. And uh, then speaking in tongues and gibberish afterwards. But um, 
they are doing a good job. Whoever's squad this was, it seems to be a mix of CIB and Storm. They are getting behind. His stat quo managing to clear out the FFI guys here. He's going to get the revive on Garni. So they have managed to creep behind. If they can keep pushing forward and find these rallies... That's the MG from the CIB guys there. So he knows where the rally is. You've got Stat Quo moving up. Stat Quo is a squad leader, so he has that little MG, but I... He's going to have to be careful here because he, he, he is on the lower ground. Stat Quo getting the kill then on Exocet. Orby still alive. But I've got to say, look, a, a, it, Jam Falcon, he's really having a hard time pushing his squad forward on the north side. And it looks like his rally is about to go down now. Mad Fox has returned with uh, Kashir. Kashir. And he has spotted the rally. He must be able to hear it. Yeah, he found the rally. Mad Fox is going to take out the rally. And that's the MSP in the north. That's all down to the MSP they have hidden all the way in the north. So Jam Falcon's rally has gone down. He is pushing forward still. He might be able to get a new rally down. We've got uh, Clem, Clem, in between Jam Falcon, running right in front of Jam Falcon, missing the shot, narrowly going over Jam Falcon's head. Jam Falcon is spraying in return. A French body is thrown at Clem, but Clem is still alive. They are laying side by side to each other now. They're literally one bush apart, reloading, healing. And there he goes, Jam Falcon getting a kill. But Jam Falcon, the only man alive in his squad, he has lost his rally. We've got uh, Akira trying to push forward with his squad as well. I can hear the French tank. There's a French tank over here that has taken damage. Northern and Wadream going back to get repaired. Mam uh, Mamad, who destroyed that tank earlier on, is looks like he's pushing forward to get the French tank. There is something over here. Let's zoom on over here. So there is a rally here. Or is that an MSP? So it's a rally. So it's that 222. So that 222 wasn't destroyed earlier. And look at this 222. Look at the position this 22 has. Perfect position for shooting. And then just two kills in the distance there. He managed to get two kills. So anyone who spawns on this rally in front of him, he's just going to pick apart. He's just going to pick apart. So great position there from that 222 on the German side. Getting the kill on Sweet Tag. I think Liquid, if he steps out here, he's going to go down to the 222 as well. Liquid. Liqu Liquid. Liquid. Looking for where the tank was from behind. He knows there's something behind them. He's trying to spot it with his binoculars. The 222 is moving. He should be able to see the 222. He's probably calling to this nearby tank, telling him, hey, there's a tank behind us. Can you come and deal with this? The 38 of Martin and Jerry. I think this is a 38. Yeah, the Renault 38 is pushing, looking to clear out the 222. Now, the 222 can do damage to this 38. He can kill the crew, and over time, he can destroy the 38. Obviously, the 38 has a huge advantage over the, the, the 222, though, purely down to the armor and the gun. Sweet Tack and Willex looking to get the 222, but look at that 222. The 22's like, screw this. I'm not sticking around here. I'm gone. I did my job. I harassed some infantry. I'm out of here. And the 222 has gone so deep now, he's almost outside the uh, the French main base. And he just drove straight by one of the French MSPs. Did he actually see the MSP? I don't think he did. No, he didn't spot the MSP. But again, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. He's just going to go behind the enemy lines and harass. Artillery now coming down for Cole FR. Some good artillery here, managing to get one, two, three, four possible kills and bleeding some others. Parabellum really struggling to get close to the point here. We had a few guys moving in from Storm and CIB from the close. We've got the Renault 38 here pushing down the road. 
it's on its own though. The the Renault here has no infantry support. Here's Ben again. Ben, this is your time to shine. Your time to shine, Ben. You wanted another call out. You wanted another shout out. What are you going to do? You're going to sit in a bush. You're going to bandage yourself. Okay, Ben. Back to the uh, 38. Harassing. Trying to just disturb the defenders here. This is what the French need to do. They need to just pull in their tanks and just harass. Just be a nuisance. Ben getting a kill on Sweet Tack. And then Ben going down. There you go, Ben. A little bit of a highlight there for you. The 38 just harassing. This is where the 38 is useful. Getting, getting into the enemy lines. Just quickly darting in and out of these trees. Just be a nuisance. Just be a complete nuisance to the infantry. Artillery coming down. That is French artillery landing on point now. And it looks like the Parabellum guys are starting to structure themselves again. So we're at 18 minutes left. And there is a big infantry push coming in from the uh, north side now. The infantry push is supported by artillery. But there's also mortars coming down from the German defenders. We'll go down on Falcon here. Falcon and his squad trying to push through this hedge line again. Falcon and his squad being very determined this game. They keep trying to push it from this uh, south approach through these... Uh, hedgerows and trees, but they've really had a tough game. So we've got General Arter running with Trigger, Strange Droid. Finally, they're getting onto the cap. They're getting onto the cap, but look at that. There is a big infantry push coming in from the cold FR. They know Parabellum is taking the first objective, and immediately they're throwing troops forward to push them off. This, uh, this tank, French tank, needs to get here quickly and support their infantry. This is a great moment for the Parabellum. This could be where they take the first objective. The uh, P-38 here is... Uh, sorry, the Renault 38 is pushing forward here. The Renault 38 taking a hit from that AT gun that is positioned straight on the main street, though. This 38 needs to get off this main road as that AT uh, cannon it can fire straight down. Two heavy hits there. The Renault doing its best to hide in the tree line. A Stuka coming in now. The Stuka's going to be straight on point, I feel. Yeah, the Stuka came in on the house. Goth Gota sneaking behind the Renault. Look at the turning speed of this tank. That's the advantage of this tank, is turn speed. Mamod is creeping forward, though. Mamod destroyed one tank earlier, and Mamod gets a second kill. Mamod, his second kill of the game. Great work by Mamod. But... Eric, yeah. strange droid, no. still alive on cap. Sweet kisses. And bro, Nissan, also alive, pushing forward, trying to get on cap. This is where Parabellum can take the first cap. And that AT gun again. Another great shot by that AT gun. That AT gun is beautifully placed. Beautiful placement by that AT gun. Parabellum needs support. Parabellum need more infantry on cap. Because we can see. Look at the infantry rolling in. A bomb went out. I think the bomb hit the AT gun. A commander bomb in run called in. So the cap has been neutralized. Artillery coming in now. This is smoke. This could be anyone's smoke. This could be French smoke. The AT gun is operational again. But look, Cole FR has thrown bodies back on the cap. General using his pistol, taking a kill on Flavian then. A great fight for this capture zone. I'm kind of rooting for Parabellum here. I want to see them take a cap. A good grenade going out there. Almost killing uh, Sweet Kisses and Trigger. Trigger throwing a grenade out. Putting it in the bush line. Daniel real close to true people. Ben. Ben going down. Daniel killing Ben and Ma Masoon then. Rassel moving forward on the flank. 
Strange Joy and Trigger going down. Kick choice. Falcon moving forward. Can Falcon get a kill here? Falcon getting the kill on uh, Rezel. Someone's calling for a revive. Jam. Jam going down there. Trying to get the revive on Sweet Kisses. And I think... I think Cole FR... Yep. It looks like Cole FR is uh, recapturing the zone. 14 minutes left. It's not over. It's not over. If Parabellum throws some more tanks forward, do another concentrated push like that, they should be able to take the zone. But it's this AT gun. The placement of this AT gun is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. This AT gun, AT gun able to fire straight down the road. This is what did damage to the Renault 38. This is what pushed the Renault 38 away from the capture zone. Forcing it into the uh, the eyes of Mamard, who finished it off. Great placement by the uh, that AT gun there. Great placement. That was the big shotgun out there. What gun is this? Bro always oh, bro using the ATR there. But bro going down. Is that a that is the 222? I believe this is the 222. It is. So the 222 here. Moved around, did a massive flank to support the infantry on this side. Uh, the CIB squad and also the Storm squad that I've been trying to flank around the Cold FR defenders. Looks like they they haven't had great success this game. And FFI squad have continually held them back. Great work by this FFI squad. I don't know who is the squad lead. But this FFI squad has done a great job of holding back the flanking uh, flanking attackers. We'll move back to cap now. Daniel trying to get revive on his squad leader there. I hear another tank. The B-38, the big boy. This is what they need. It's, this can be penned by the AT gun, but it's going to be a little bit stronger. The problem is it's slow. It's going to need support from the infantry. Unlike the P-38, that is very quick, very nimble, able to turn on the spot. Very agile. This is a battleship. This is a land ship. It's going to need support from infantry, but this, if it gets support from the infantry, this is going to be a great asset. And you can see it's been very cautious. It knows there's something heavy up the road. It doesn't want to push straight forward. Daniel and uh, Akur here trying to find, trying to move in. Grenades going out here. The P-38 firing up the main road. So in chat, Safi is saying they've destroyed an MSP. So Parabellum have managed to destroy one of the MSPs. And the 2-2-2, there goes the 2-2-2. Great work by Ewar and Northern then. Taking out the 222. Uh, the 222 has been alive since the start of the game. The 222 got stuck in a ditch. They was trying to free it. And there goes the 222. So great work. But there goes the B-33. The B-33 has been hit by artillery. Oh. German artillery taking out the big boy. The big boy goes down to German artillery. Great use of German artillery there. Very unfortunate for Parabellum. 10 minutes remaining. I've got to say, even if Parabellum did take this first objective, I don't think they're going to have enough left to take another two objectives afterwards. So we do have another tank over here. I think this is Panhard. So, yeah, we do have the Panhard over here from Sip, Martin, and Jerry. Panhard looking to support his infantry. Sawtech taking fire then. Ben... With the sniper. Ben getting a kill there. There you go. That's your first shout out, Ben. You've got men men you best off. Men you best off. Pushing forward a squad leader there. Strange droid is down. And I think Daniel. Daniel is alive. Daniel's currently the only only French attacker alive on cap. He is a squad leader. So he does have that very strong uh, SMG. Very good kill there by uh, D by Daniel. Flanking round, using the windowsill and getting the kill on seam. Very, very clever move there from him. 
See if we can get another kill. So he knows there's one one more person there. Unfortunately, he didn't get the kill on Soul. Jam Falcon and his squad still trying to push forward on this flank. Under fire from this SMG. This is Sark on that M42 again. Or is this the M... I, I forget the name. It's not. It's, is this the M38? 42? I, I struggle to remember all their names. Enigma uh, pushing forward. Another squad leader with that SMG. Doing his best to clear out the flank here. Sark hiding. Or trying to, trying to get behind Enigma. Enigma getting the kill on Snark. So the, the, the machine gun has gone da down. Daniel is still alive on cap. He's on his own. But he is, he is doing work. He killed Mamad. He's got a bunch of kills here. He's been annoying to the Call of our defenders. Ooh, very luckily for him. He ran inside. Flavian is below. And Daniel goes down. Flanked from both sides. Flavian and Salty flanking on both sides. So Daniel doing his best there. Jam Falcon still trying to move forward. Oh no, Jam Falcon, I think he's actually dead. Yeah, Jam Falcon is actually dead. You can see in the mortars coming down now. This is... This is German mortars coming down now. Just doing everything they can at this point to hold the defenders back. Seven minutes left. If Parabellum don't start neutralizing within the next five minutes, they've lost this game. The flankers here, they did take out the AT gun, but it looks like General might revive the, uh, the AT operator. Trigger sneaking behind, getting a shot off. Trigger trying to kill General. Trigger going down. Oh, I think that was General with a pistol. Or no, it might have been Oscar from. Yeah, it was Oscar from behind with his pistol. So you can see, you can see here, the CIB guys and the Storm guys in that squad. They did flank behind. They did cut off reinforcements. But this FFR team. This FFR squad continued to be a nuisance. They continued to be a counter-attack to the flankers. Exocet getting a revive on his teammate there. A couple of Storm guys still alive. Garni going down and Nickelman going down. So that is all the, uh, all the squads from the Parabellum guys dead on this side. I can hear a tank exchange going down. I'm zooming over as fast as I can. So there is a... There is a big boy. I forget what this tank is. I think this is a P3. A very good tank. One of the only tanks that is good against the French tanks. And he destroyed... No, it was Mamar again. A Mamar with another tank kill. Killing the uh, Renault 38. And now the, the Germans have brought one of their best tanks... In chapter 2, on to point. With 5 minutes left in game, I'm going to... I'm. I might be calling this early, but I think... Cole FR, I've taken this. So they do have a P3 now. I believe this is a P3. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is a P3. It's one of the best tanks the, uh, the Germans can get in the chapter 2... Uh, chapter 2 layout... Uh, chapter 2 maps. So any French tanks coming forward now have to compete with this. We saw the Matilda and also the, the, the B3 have died. So I believe the French have lost all their heavy tanks now. So they're going to have a hard time even penning the P3. Uh, it looks like a MSP. <laughs> a French MSP tried to, tried to rush the point maybe. I can hear more artillery coming out now. But... But this looks like it is going to be in Cole FR's uh, uh, favor. I think this is the Panhard over here. The Panhard can pen the P3. 
the P4, but it's going to be hard for him to do so. One shot going out. The Panhard did get hit by the P4. Uh, sorry, the P3. So the Panhard is retreating. The, the Panhard did hit the P3, but it did no damage. AT rifles being shot at the P3. It's just shrugging them off. It doesn't care. We'll hide nameplates again. And this is what um, this is what the Parabellum guys needed last game. They needed a P3. They needed something that could deal with those heavier tanks from the French. Maybe they didn't get one in their tank tank deck. Are they going to be able to kill the Panhard from this distance? It did just drive right in front of them. So great awareness by this tank crew. They knew where the Panhard would have to retreat to. Are they going to be able to kill it? It looks like they did spot the Panhard. The Panhard under fire from a flak. The Panhard is going to go down here. It's under fire by a 222 and the P3. The driver was killed. P3 missed, but the Panhard is dead. It is crewless now. And there goes the Panhard. Flanked very nicely by the 222, I believe. Yeah, another 222. And also the P3, so great work there. Uh, oops. So there is only 2 minutes and 50 seconds left. Cold FR have won this. It takes 2 minutes to capture a zone. And with no troops on the capture zone and no majority there. Cold FR will take this. Great job at defending. Very aggressive defense here from Cold FR. That's what we saw. Enigma getting a few kills here at the end. Going, going down to steam. The P3 moving back to the point to make sure they can't get it in the last couple of minutes. The 222 also coming in close. Jam Falcon doing his best to push forward. Mad Fox flanking around with the MG, I believe. Another tank coming forward here. Is this another B33? We might see one more tank exchange here. The B33 rushing forward. It's gonna, it might run head to head against the P3. P3 versus the B33. Uh, sorry, the B3 versus the P3. I mean, that is... We're seeing another great battle here. Another another great tank battle going on here. Uh, it's going to be very hard for either of them to pen each other. So I think this is just the un unstoppable object meets the unmovable object here. Oh, the, the B3 did pen. The P3 then. A little bit of damage exchanged. One minute left. <laughs> We've got a German soldier trying to, trying to open the hatch to throw a grenade. It looks like the 222 coming in to get into the action. The P3 is actually half, half health. So the B3 might win this. Eventually. <laughs> He's got 50 seconds left. 50 seconds here. And, um... Is that Mama? <laughs> I mean... Look. If you're not going to win the game, at least... At least go out in style, right? Go out in style. It's, I feel like I'm watching Robot Wars. Is, is this the early 2000s? Am I watching Robot Wars here? But, um, I... The last 10 seconds there. Northern and uh, Iwoi get the kill on the P3, but Cole FR taking the second match. Cole FR, great defense there. Parabellum. They did a great job. Credit to both teams. Playing both games on one night is very hard to do. I imagine a lot of these players are very tired now. Here's the scoreboard at the end. I'm just going to quickly go down it. Reminder, I'm going to restart the stream now with no delay. So don't go away. We're going to restart the stream after the delay is gone with no delay and interview a player from both teams. So don't go anywhere. And if you haven't already, hit the follow button. So you can see why I'm going live. More postgraduate content to come. But don't go anywhere. We're going to be back soon with the player interview. So see you soon.